Morning Blitz begins now. All right. Welcome in the hump day. It's National Tequila Day, too. And National Cousins Day. Enough tequila. I got a question know. whether or not a cousin's really a cousin. <laughs> yeah, maybe not good to have those on the same day. Is it? Maybe not. I'm sure there's probably some kind of cheesy pre-recorded tequila thing that we could play. But I feel pretty confident that I could drink a bottle of tequila and not have any problems with my cousins whatsoever. I'm confident of that. What if you don't know their cousins? <laughs> I, I think... You got a bunch of cousins out there no, you don't know about, Lewis? No. <laughs> Not unless I win the so, lottery. Dude, it, have you seen the Netflix show about the <laughs> Wait, what? The people yes. who are, like, finding out that they have, like, a hundred uh, siblings yes. from the sperm donor? Yes. Oh, my gosh. And they're all in the same town? That would be me if I won the lottery. <laughs> hey, cousin. Who the hell are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... Kelly, I would like to see you drink a bottle of tequila, no, period. No, well, I'd be dead. Right. But... <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't have any problem with I was just anybody. trying to make a point, uh, Thick Rick. That's just like, trying to make a point with a little like exaggeration. You, you always had that friend in college. What do you give me if I drink this 100-proof bottle of liquor? Mouth-to-mouth resuscitation, know, you man. dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, golly. Hey, uh, Kelly, I think we have some good news for you. Okay. I think she's about done. She's been done and on the way in the back of the recesses of people's memories for a solid month. But okay, tell well, me. no, I mean they're still taking Hawk to a girl around to do stuff, and she was. Uh, Why didn't we do this on Hawk Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> she was uh, introducing a country show. It was uh, Warren. Is it Ziders? Warren Ziders. Ziders and, and, and Jelly Roll. Okay. And they brought her up and introduced her. And it was crickets. And she said, give it up for Warren Ziders and Jelly Roll. And it was crickets. And then the other girl went out and said, thanks, Haley. Give it up for Haley. And crickets. Really? It was really awkward. Oh, no. I don't want to see someone be embarrassed like that no. in well, front of a large her, audience. But I, still, it's like, why Why are we thinking this girl has got anything other than a drunken sexual innu- innuendo? That's what <laughs> that's, she's got. She it. has yet to do a um, OnlyFans. So I wonder if if the 15 minutes of fame goes away, does the OnlyFans Maybe. surface? She's got 1.8 million followers on Instagram. So I don't know, you know. I had to Google someone last night because I found out that a friend of mine, when I lived in Michigan, a friend of mine dated a girl who at the time was in school for and had got her degree in engineering. Mm-hmm. But has since started an OnlyFans to pay some bills because the engineering thing was it was working but not enough apparently. Made a mill her first year on OnlyFans and is now a internet star, if you know what I mean. <laughs> How fast did you look her up? I haven't yet. Okay. I just found this out last night. So I have not I have you not had time. I have not done my field research yet. Okay. <laughs> But well, you let's, uh, better damn well believe that I will. Let's check that out when we go to commercial break. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I got to get all the info. But he's like, dude, I just found out my ex is a porn star. I'm like, what? Dead bitch. <laughs> like, how did this happen? But yeah, but apparently she kicked her engineering degree to the curb and is only fanning it up. I'm like, why is my only fans not working like that? Hmm. I ain't seen a million my first year. That I promise you. There were uh, just was, don't get it. It was funny though. After Haley did, that. what do they have that I don't? <laughs> <laughs> Big boobs, <laughs> right? Um, after Haley did that intro, though, there you know there there was a story about it, and there were comments. Uh, one said, uh, "I just got secondhand embarrassment so bad." Uh, another one said, "She was June. This is July. Time's up." And then another one said, "And the crowd went mild." <laughs> so it sounds like her time's up. Yeah. I don't know. I'll never get tired of this. Oh, uh, you, you gotta give him that. Come on, that's funny. Can you listen to that on your own private time? Oh, right. <laughs> it's not quite the same, though. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, she's, I mean, you gotta give her credit for trying. Well, I mean, she, she didn't have to try, really. She didn't have to do anything. You know, you don't need talent to be famous these days. 
Say a- one thing. Three fourths of YouTube. You know, um, cash me outside. How about that? That's all she had to say. Yeah. And boom, look at her now, worth forty million dollars. Thanks to <laughs> OnlyFans. Yeah. yeah. Used to be. I used to have a thing. Now I used to have this thing where, because believe it or not. I've not been a fan. I would not. I've not been a fan of until I talked to one that tuned it into me. My thing with strippers used to be <laughs> it was the easiest way out because every girl could take her clothes off and make money. Like that was just it was possible. And then I had a friend of mine and a stripper both. We were talking one night because I have nothing against them, but said you got this all wrong. You need to look at it from the other side. It's not the stripper that has the problem. It's the guy that shows up that has the problem because he is spending the better part of his paycheck on a weekly basis hoping that one day she's going to have a moment of weakness and, you know... You're going to be there to catch her. And he's going to be there. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Because he is leaving whatever life he has at home to dump dollar after dollar Um, after dollar there. And I'm like, yeah, I guess you're right. Well, I think I guess that depends. I don't think that's everybody who goes. I mean, just no. just based on my experience working in Myrtle Beach, you know, I did, you know, radio station appearances at a couple different clubs down there, and it's all tour. I mean, it's all tourists. That's a lot of mostly it was mostly college guys just coming in there to drink and you know, woo woo. <laughs> it's all it was. Yeah. So I I don't know if they go back home and spend all their time in those bars. I don't know, but. Don't get me wrong. I but like there, you're right. There are guys there that probably have dinner there every night. Every night. Yeah. And that's, you know, as soon as payday comes. Woo-hoo! <laughs> Lap dance. <laughs> so. uh, anyway, yeah. enough about that. We have got, once again, tickets to see Louder Than Life. Mm-hmm. And uh, we will tell you how to win those right after your news at 7 o'clock, Kelly. Let's get to Morning Blitz Trivia. 25 bucks to water beds and stuff and beds and stuff superstores if you're the first one to text in the correct answer at 99700. USA Today put out their 10 best awards, and they ranked this chain as the number one regional fast food restaurant in the country. Now, think about that. It's a regional fast food restaurant, but they looked at all the regional fast food restaurants around the country, and they ranked this one number one. Tell us what it is at 99700. Be the first one to do that, and we'll hook you up with that gift card. I prevail on the Morning Blitz 622. Thick Kelly Lewis Morning Blitz trivia. I knew the answer to this, but I didn't say anything. Well, I would imagine... Being from Cincinnati. Yeah, but see, I grew up... This is It's where you grow up. The original is Empress, which was downtown, which my grandmother used to take me to on a bus. Empress? Empress is the original. Like, what? Well, it was Empress... Empress Chili, Chili. is the original. Mm-hmm. Really? Yep. That what? That's what Skyline used to be called? No, 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 no. Skyline came along later. The original Cincinnati Chili is Empress. Oh, it's all, I see what you're saying. It's all Greek. Yeah. Everything about it is Greek. But then Skyline, and depending on what part of town you grew up in, you might be Skyline, you might be Gold Star. Well, what's the other one called? Uh, there's a bunch. There's Camp Washington, there's Pleasant Ridge. Guy Fieri did Blue Ash Chili, which is... It, is there one called Cincinnati Chili or now something? Now, the Cincinnati Chili is just because it's the pasty look of it and the recipe right. style. but I thought there was another... No, Empress like, was the original. Empress, E-M-P-R-E-S-S, was the original. I thought they had a major competitor. Skyline did. It's called Gold Star. Gold Star. Gold Star was maybe that's it. Maybe that's Gold Star. Was, it used to be Skyline was the Reds. Gold Star was the Bengals. Now Skyline is. Both. Oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> so, but I mean, I. But again, I grew up with a Skyline in walking distance, so I'm a Skyline kid. All right. Well, the the Morning Blitz trivia question was USA Today put out their uh, ten best awards, and uh, the number one ranked regional fast food restaurant in the country, uh, Skyline Chili, was what they named. And um, I saw this uh, in uh, 614 Magazine. Sav McKee said, there are two types of people in this world. Those who like cinnamon and then they're chili and those who don't. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I love that flavor. I do too. I don't even, it's the one place that I don't think ever in my life I've ever looked at a menu. Right, because you know it. I know it. You know the menu. Yeah, I don't have to look at it. What about you, Kat? Do you like Skyline? Um, I had my fill of Skyline. Yeah? Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the Shut cinnamon. The front door. It's okay. I'll eat it if I absolutely have to, and and I won't hate it. 
but it's not something I would ever purposely, like on my own, decide I need to go have. <laughs> In 2012, when I moved back to Ohio, there was a Skyline and a La Rosa's Pizza in within a block of where my um, like extended stay was, I must have eaten there like every other day I had, which is horrible for you. I mean, nothing against Skyline. It's like anything else. You eat it once, it's great. You don't want to go five days straight on that. But I had not had it for so long every other day. Mm. Three-way, three-way, three-way. Three, three, like yeah. every other day. And then I'm like, all right. I get on those food jags, though. Like, so I'll, I'll stick with one thing for lunch for, like, months. And then there's <laughs> one day that I've had enough, and i got to switch. But I understand that, yeah. Mike Funk, I was about to give you credit because your Oreo <laughs> trick worked, and I proved that last night. But what you just said about Skyline, them's fighting words. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, they're now in Indiana, Kentucky, and Florida, Skyline is. Yep. I was disappointed because I went to a Reds um, spring training game when I was in Phoenix, and I was pissed because there was no skyline there. I was so mad. I'm like, how can you not have a skyline at the Red Spring Training <laughs> Yeah, stadium? that just seems like it's automatic. Yeah, I was so mad. I'm like, we're going to get skyline. We're going to get three ways. We're going to watch Reds. Ba- what? <laughs> so I don't really go to skyline anymore. We just buy the cans of skyline chili. Uh, and different. we make it ourselves. It's different. I know, but it's easier. It is. It's, it's so different. much easier. And honestly, it's cheaper. Um, but... Uh, I, I hadn't mentioned this. We did this two weeks ago. Tomorrow's National Chili Dog Day. Yes. And Ronnie Hunter is actually giving away Skyline gift cards all this week, uh, every day in the 4 o'clock hour. You can win those from her. Um, but uh, my wife Heather saw this because we would sometimes we make like the Skyline chili with spaghetti, you know, the three-way. And other times we'll make the Skyline conies. Well, she saw this, and we tried it, and it was Skyline chili corn dogs where we took corn dogs and sliced them in half and made conies out of them dude oh really very good you okay can do- so wait do you do extra bread no no you no that's the bun the co- oh yeah, but, i love that idea a, i just use a fork and a knife yeah, it's you're gonna be make messy. an absolute mess yeah. you can also sounds you, good yeah you just you know we i, oh, I love I, corn I, dogs I, I heated the corn dogs and then you just you know and then you can pull the stick right out and just sliced it right down the middle See, do i do that with chili, wendy's skyline chili. cheese and onion I do it and with mustard wendy's chili. And, wendy's chili and cheese yeah oh that yeah. sounds great for your next super bowl or sports get together make the skyline dip little cream cheese on the yes, bottom add the yeah. chili and the cheese on top throw some tortilla chips in there and there dip go. that stuff out yeah oh that sounds good it's quality you're on the hook for that all right you if have you ever have it. a gathering that's what you're bringing that's what i, that's what I do <laughs> awesome <laughs> skyline right. is not disgusting ashley duncan the hell yeah, a lot of people don't like it. Yeah, I, well, I'm sort of mid. A lot of people aren't smart. That's what I said. Sav McKee from 614 Magazine. She said there are those who like cinnamon in their uh, in their chili and those who don't. Dustin said La Rosa's and Noble Romans were the best. La Rosa's is fantastic, but La Rosa's is an upper is a different level when you get it at Kings Island or the Reds game. You know why? And I figured this out. Me and we we literally studied this one day, all of us. <laughs> and I, the reason being is, if you order it from the restaurant, they make it right then and there, like their yes. standard. This yeah. is how we make the pizza. If you go to Kings Island or the Reds game, there's so many people ordering it. They mass produce it, and they just slop everything on oh. it, and it is a thousand times better. Oh. I don't know what it is, but a slice of I will ne- even the at Great American Ballpark they come out with the greatest food item ever, and I would bypass it and go get a slice of six dollar La Rosa's pizza because it's made at the stadium and it is slopped together, and it is a different <laughs> level for whatever reason. I don't know why, but that's my go-to. Okay. Hmm. Sharon said she goes to Skyline for the baked potato. They yeah. used to you have like a rice and beans yeah, there that. that I would eat. They still do. Rice and beans? Yes. Yeah, I would eat that over the chili. You can do any day. the uh, baked, the chili baked potato is a solid, uh, a solid option yeah, as well. They also have fries good. that you can get chili on. You can get the chilito, which is the, essentially a cheese cone without the cheese cone wrapped in a burrito tortilla. Mm-hmm. A lot. Well, some you people, really know that menu. <laughs> <laughs> some people don't I'm like it because... They're thinking. I don't. I don't look at it as chili. My, myself personally, I look at it as coney sauce, a diff, whole different type of spaghetti sauce, because uh, it doesn't taste anything like chili to me. Like the chili I'm used to eating. Like you, Kelly, you mentioned Wendy's chili. That skyline and and that skyline sauce and chili to me are two very different. Yeah, things. that's a it's, good point. I've just, never thought of it that way. I don't but look you're right. at it as chili. You know, so yeah. if you're saying, "Well, that's not good chili," I'm like, "Cause that's not like chili." Chili. Do people just eat it on its own? 
Yeah. Uh, oh, without, with like, a, a three-way, in a bowl, without anything else, like pasta. You know what? Or, yeah, I, I don't would never know, do that. I, would I don't know. never do that. In all the years I've had Skyline, I can't honestly say I've had a bowl of it without spaghetti in it. Do or, they offer or a hot dog be- or something. Do they something. offer beans? Yeah. You, no, three you, can way, get, you can get a three-way is just the chili, right, spaghetti, and the cheese. Right. A four-way, you, you get four. Or bean. You okay. can, four way can be onion right. or be five way is everything. Beans I just couldn't remember if they had beans. Yeah. But they yeah, do. Because uh, to me, real chili has beans in it. Now, not everybody agrees with that, but that's me. Yeah, but not everybody can yell. There are also people who have a problem with chili over pasta, which I can't figure out why, because that's not a skyline thing. Chili over yeah, pasta. There's all th- kinds of things you can put on pasta. Yeah, I don't. There's some people, I can't get past the chili on the pasta. Why? Oh, but you'll put shrimp on it, or you'll put chicken on it, or you'll put. I mean, that's. Yeah, okay, I don't understand that. I mean, pasta's good with a lot of different things. I made a so. chicken fajita pasta last night that my stomach is still oh. punching me in the stomach for. God, that sounds good. Uh, yes, I used a, I made a queso cheese base, uh, some ziti pasta, steak, chicken. All right, we're all getting hungry. Enough. Enough. (laughs) That's a kick to it, though. Hey, uh, Jeffrey Browning was the first one to text in the correct answer of Skyline Chili, so he's got 25 bucks to water beds and stuff. It's the Morning Blitz. It's time for another edition of Normal or No. Yep. 6.40. Dick, Kelly, Lewis. Who's who would like to go first? Oh, I will. Okay, go for it. I do this all the time, and I didn't think I'd ever talk about this on the radio for any reason. I didn't think this would ever come up, but it is absolutely fits into Sob this Sob uncontrollably every January when the Cowboys are eliminated from Super Bowl contention. Again, this coming from a Bengals fan. A freaking Bengals fan. You said you do it all the Talking time. Trash. It's been 30 years, so I figured that constitutes it all the time. Are you going to buy the new Madden next month? Because <laughs> I want to put the Bengals against the Cowboys at Madden, and we'll, we'll settle this between us. Hey, look, Not So Slim Shady is back at quarterback right now, so we're good. <laughs> not So Slim Shady. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, I do this every time. Uh, I did this Monday because I had potato chips with a sandwich. And I eat all the broken small pieces of chips first, and then I eat the whole chips. What kind of savage are you? Is that oh. normal or no? Nope? I don't know. I kind of like the idea of saving the best for last. Why? Well, yeah. It's the way I am with food. <laughs> so you, See, you eat the. I don't know why. I just, you know, you know, you pull some out, you pull out a handful, and put them on your plate, and you got a bunch of whole ones and a bunch of pieces. And, and I that, always eat all the little pieces first. In the house that I reside in, if you're not the first one to open the chips, it's a pretty safe bet you're going to get nothing but broken pieces of chips <laughs> yeah. and what's left of a bag anyway. That's kind of the nature of a bag of chips. Yeah. There's more like broken crumbs. I try to take very good care of them so they don't get to that point, but you know, it's here's an hard to avoid. Here's an interesting fact about chips. Chips. Socks and underwear come in resealable packaging. Chips do not. I know. <laughs> um, I would say I don't do that, though, Thick. I'll eat the good ones first. Okay. Yeah, and then I'll just leave the crumbs. So you're a nope? Yeah, I'm a nope on that one. Right. I like Lewis? to eat the big chips first. Yeah, I'm a no. Just, does it, I mean, you don't even, it doesn't even matter to you. you don't even I just grab a it. chip. If yeah. it's broken, it's broken. If right. it's not, it's yeah, not. Don't I don't attention. pay attention. Well, I didn't figure everybody did it, but, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's Chad just, says he my does brain the exact is weird thing. something. <laughs> I don't know. What's that? Mike Funk says the biggest chip for last. Chad says he does uh, the same thing you do. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. Good. I'm not alone. No, you're not alone on that one. <laughs> All right. Well, how about this one? Normal or nope? Grabbing the remote at light speed to click next episode just so you can skip past like six seconds of end credits of the show you're binge watching. Who doesn't do that? I don't know. I never wait. Like I, Char- I tell I don't. you, Charlie and I are watching The Bear season three, yes. and we're not through it yet, so yeah. don't spoil it. Um, but we will. He'll just kind of let it go until the next episode starts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will click. I don't. I want to skip two seconds if I can. I'm skipping everything. I'm skipping that where it says click here for next episode. Skip. Recap. Skip intro. Skip. Skip, skip intro. Yes. Skip everything. I'm Same. going right See, I use to the Same. beginning of the next episode Same. Man, I as use, quick as possible. I use that time. I reposition the dog. <laughs> like that's, I mean, if you get through the, if you let, sometimes if depending on the show you're watching, there might be a stinger scene that you need to see for the next thing. I, you know, you use that 17 seconds for that. I mean, I put that time to valuable use. All right, okay. So I guess I'm not normal. Yep, Mike's all normal there on the remote. Yep. Yeah, I, 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 I don't want. I, I don't need to see all that stuff. I don't need to waste my time with it. 
All right. All right so, yes. normal or no? Going to multiple fast food restaurants because they all have different things you like, like the drink, <laughs> the main course, or the side. I am notorious for doing this. Really? Absolutely. I've never done that in my life. Never have? Never. It's always a decision where you're going to go, but once you make that decision, that's it. Uh, I've never I've, traveled from place to place to get what I wanted. Oh, I have. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I have. But I, I don't I do not do that. What about you, Thick? Um, I'm trying to think. I think I've done that from to get a milkshake from a place, but I have done that for people in the house. Mm-hmm. Um, like Heather wanted... Arby's and I wasn't in the mood, so I stopped by McDonald's or whatever. And uh, my daughter was never a fan of Tommy's Pizza, which we loved on Lane Avenue, and she loved Pizza Hut. So I would get our pizza from Tommy's, and across the street, I'd get hers from Pizza Hut. All right, so you, Lewis, you have to cobble together one meal from different restaurants. What is it? What's that so meal? So I would get a, I would get my fries. If I would, if we're talking, are we talking fast food? Yeah. yeah okay. Fast food. Sure. So I would get my fries from McDonald's, but then I would go and get like a um, Popeye's. I don't necessarily want the deep fried chicken sandwich, but Popeye's does have a black and Cajun chicken sandwich that's grilled. That's pretty good. So I would get oh. my chicken sandwich from Popeye's, but I would pair that with the McDonald's fries. Okay. I'm not particular about the beverage, though, because I'm being a Cincinnati kid. To me, everything's a Coke. Like, even if I'm drinking a Diet Pepsi, it's a Coke. <laughs> Taste doesn't bother Taste me. Taste doesn't bother okay. me. It is what it is. But I would definitely mix and match stuff of that nature. Right. Yeah. Right. Your main and your side are yeah. coming from two different, two different places. places. All right. Yeah. I like it. I, I so, don't yeah. hate that. Yeah, Popcorn Pan says, don't discriminate, eat them all. <laughs> um, I would do that. I, I'm not against doing that at all. You would know, you? going to different places. For- I, 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 me, for me, it's the least effort possible. Right. So I, I'll stay at one restaurant popcorn, even if I don't like the fries or something. Popcorn Pan won't discriminate. Cassandra uses the intro time to go to the bathroom. Mike does um, the fast food thing a few times. And Jackie said, does anyone else take the final crumbles of chips in a bag and mix it into the salsa or dip? Uh, and then chow that stuff up with a spoon. No, I have not done that. I'm not against it. But it doesn't seem wrong in any level, on yeah. any level. Did Pam text in again and say don't discriminate? <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> That's normal or nope. Watch your brides, 650 on the morning blitz with Kelly Quinn, Thick Rick, I'm Lewis. A lot of people do the fast food mixing and matching. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, said, text. Jeff said Popeye's Black and Tenders. Have not tried those, but I certainly will. Trashman Dave said back when uh, Wendy's fries sucked, I would get McDonald's fries with the Wendy's sandwich. Roger said the Whopper with the McDonald's fries. Mike's uh, all over the place. Fries, the Rally Burger, the drink, and the McDonald's shake, and a Frosty to top Oh, man, that's off. too much work. Now, that's just too much work. I mean, isn't your burger <laughs> getting cold when you're right. driving down the street to get you your... Got, you got to get the fries last. Okay, <laughs> so you have a whole system. Well, because fries don't travel well. If yeah. You, if no, you, they don't. You got to get the, the last thing you need to get is the fries. Okay. I saw a thing that said, "Do not close your bag. Your like your fast food bag of food. If you've got fries in there, you know a lot of people will roll it down to keep the because then your fries get soggy. Really? Yeah. Oh. I just know that like if you can you can throw a burger in the microwave for twenty seconds to reheat it back up, but and it has the, it's okay. The fries you do that you've ruined your fries. Hmm. Anyway, uh, here's one for you. A guy in New Jersey um, was charged with decapitating a seagull that stole fries. Speaking of French fries. Stole fries. fries. <laughs> Charges including animal cruelty have been filed against a Jersey dude after he allegedly decapitated a seagull for taking French fries from his daughter. Police say the incident happened earlier at Maury's Pier in North Wildwood. They say 29-year-old Franklin Zeigler was also charged with disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. How do you decap? How do you get a bird with a machete? I will. I will go so far as to say, children's services should investigate. Start investigating. If you're doing that in front of your young daughter, oh yeah, that's true. You are d- committing this really terrible act against an animal. You should. They should open a file on this guy. Right now. Well, you might be right. Yeah. That is a little, uh. You're doing that in there. front of your kid? 
That's proper parenting how? to you to but, show her how to deal with a bird. That so, how about just laughing and tossing a couple fries to the bird? Yeah, doesn't that sound like a nicer way to handle the situation? No, that's fun. That's not the kind of father you need. You need the kind of father that's going to show you how to use the scientific calculator on your phone and get upset when the oh, app doesn't. Right open. here we go. Here I knew it was coming back up today. I knew it. What? Well, tell him for everybody who wasn't listening at this if you time. Were not jo- if you were not tuned into the Morning Blitz yesterday at circa 8.45-ish a.m., we were talking about people stealing school supplies from their for their kids from the their place of work. Right. Which led us to, why do you need to buy a uh, scientific calculator anymore? Because you've got the calculator app on your phone. Which then prompted everybody to say... The calculator app on your phone will be a scientific calculator if you turn your phone sideways. So Kelly, on her iPhone, turn, opens up her calculator app, turns it sideways, boom, scientific calculator. Hold on, hold on. Before you continue, I just want to say, I, I, I listened to this whole thing yesterday, and nobody mentioned opening calculator. Now, I beg to differ because well, we I, were I, all I, talking about how the calculator app is just a basic calculator. Yes. And I'm like, yeah. And somebody said, no, turn that sideways. Turn that sideways, and it turns into a giant calculator. Somebody said, if you've got an iPhone and you turn it sideways, it's a scientific calculator. That's how it started. Meaning the app. Well, that's not what was said. When is the first time you've picked up your phone and it's automatically been a calculator without you opening the calculator I don't have an iPhone. So the funny thing is, is that I have an iPhone. Lewis has an Android. Thick has an Android. And Lewis and I, right away, we're like, oh, my gosh, look at this. It's so cool. It's like it's not working on my phone. So, so he, he goes over to Lewis and is like, look, see, I turn it sideways and there's no calculator. And Lewis goes, well, you might want to open the calculator app first. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like the heavens parted and the sky opened and sun shined down. And needless to say, Thick Rick's calculator app became a scientific calculator app. Oh, man, did I hear about it yesterday? Oh, yeah. What did the missus say? I don't know. She couldn't speak from laughing so hard. <laughs> She texted in yesterday and said she was peeing her pants laughing so hard. That's what I first thing I said to her when I got home. I said, did you wash your pants? She goes, why? I go, didn't you pee them? She goes, oh, yeah. And then she busted out laughing again. Yeah. So you got to open the app first. Uh, Matt said yeah. if the bird's attacking the child, he might understand for the animal. Yeah, but this is stealing seagulls. If the bird was attacking the child and you swooped in with a machete and decapitated it, that would be like a movie-style aggressive. Yeah, this was not that. This no. was a bird getting a french fry but don't you feed they aren't there a lot of signs in a lot of places that say don't feed the seagulls because they'll eat their garbage dumps they'll eat whatever oh you yeah eat. there's no it. sign that says if a seagull steals a french fry you should decapitate it <laughs> still trying i want to no, know I how he there would be i don't know how he caught it how he that just seems bizarre to me you almost it's feel gross like he, you almost oh, feel yeah, like you too. would have to bait it with the fry and then chop I, maybe that's what he did chop with the other hmm. you know Shane just texted in and said, only Thick Rick. Yeah. Right now, all right, all right, all three things you need to know before you go. The former top executive at the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium, accused with four others of stealing millions of dollars from the zoo, has pleaded guilty to multiple criminal charges, including fraud and theft. Tom Staff has agreed to pay $315,000 in restitution to the zoo, the state of Ohio, and the IRS as part of his plea deal. Now, that's on top of the $400,000 he's already repaid. Staff was scheduled to go on trial August 6th. He will be sentenced on October 14th. Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle resigned yesterday, 10 days after a gunman's near assassination of former President Trump. The agency says Ronald Rowe, the deputy director of the Secret Service, will take over as acting director. A man who won $1 million in the Tennessee lottery almost never saw his winnings because a clerk at the store where he bought the ticket tried to steal it without the customer even knowing that he actually won. So police say this clerk, his name's Meet Patel. He's 23 years old. He was working at the Shell gas station when the victim bought two scratch-off lottery tickets. So this guy only scratched off the front barcodes and then asked the clerk, Patel, to check and see if they're winners. So... Investigators say that Patel did give the man one of the tickets back and said, you won $40 on this one. He tossed the $1 million ticket in the trash, the winning ticket in the trash. Store video shows Patel later removing that Uh ticket from the garbage and putting it in his pocket. 
When he tried to claim the prize, lottery officials became immediately suspicious. I guess they asked a series of just basic questions about the ticket, and they were not satisfied with any of this guy's answers. So they held on to the ticket and told Patel to get his affairs in order. He was later arrested and charged. Uh, the original ticket holder, by the way, is getting that $1 million oh, good. prize. Yeah, so it's a nice ending to the story. I don't know how you think you're going to get away with that. Maybe you, you wonder how in the world would anybody know, but they knew that's a, pretty that's quickly. That's a trip. Uh, Gerald texted and he says, if I buy tickets, I don't play the game. I just scratch the bottom barcode and scan it on my phone. Yeah, oh, you cool. can do that. I did not. I've never heard anything like that before. There you go. You do that. It's hmm. a safer way to do it, I guess, than handing it over to the clerk. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's a, I mean, I wonder what made them suspicious to begin with. I mean, wouldn't he have just said, oh, I just bought it at work? Well, number one, yeah, you're the clerk. Yeah. I wonder if that's. I mean, I just say, I worked there and I bought that? it. Why well, don't I mean? You have to prove that you purchased it and didn't steal it. For one thing, I would imagine you've got rolls and rolls of lottery tickets there. I don't know. It just seems weird as a clerk to come up with a one million dollar winner. I would be suspicious of that as well. Yeah, I suppose so. That feels weird. No, but yeah, they said you they, work, yeah, because you work there. They said they asked a series of questions and they were not satisfied with his answers. Hmm. So I don't know if he had to sort of recount what happened and he couldn't do that very well. You know, people's stories break down when they're lying. All right. Those are your three things. Puddle of mud. It's blurry. The morning blitz. 710 with Dick, Kelly, and Lewis. Reading through the text. (laughs) The lottery guy. That's I'm baffled by that. Like, I want to know what questions he failed. Well, I don't know, man. Maybe I can find out for you. Let's well, see. You... I w- I'm imagining they're like, oh, all right. Well, awesome. Where did you buy the ticket? Um, yeah, I where just... do you work? Oh, it's the same place. Um, well, tell me what happened. Did you uh, blah, blah, blah? He probably just didn't figure he'd have to answer any questions. You just come in with a winning ticket and get your million dollars. I don't think I would have been honest about where I worked. I'd have lied. I was straight up lie. I would not say I'm a convenience store clerk. That's a red flag right there. You got to be smarter than that. If you're scamming somebody out of a million dollars, you got to think it all the way through. You know what I mean? Oh, I bought a ticket when I was off work. Oh, did you now? Like, that would just be shady. Lottery. Ron said lottery worker should be the head of the Secret Service. She resigned. That job is open. <laughs> wow. Potential. Uh, let's get you some tickets for Louder Than Life in Louisville. You don't need a lottery to go, especially if you win these passes. Uh, you're listening for Pantera Walk. When you hear it, between now and 8 o'clock, you, if you're caller number... Kelly, it's your job. How about number 28? Number 228. 28. Oh, 28. <laughs> What's a long There's song? No 200. I swore to Thick Rick I'd never go above the number 30, so... Okay. 200. That's why it's her job. <laughs> Caller 28 when you hear Pantera walk. That is what you want to be at 1 800 821 9970. And you might find yourself at Louder Than Life if you're inclined to go or if you're lucky enough to win. 723 on the morning blitz. I would be Lewis. That's Dick Rick. She's Kelly Quinn. If you love cocaine bear, <laughs> you will love cocaine sharks. I I uh, did you ever play the the online video game? Of what? Cocaine bear? No. It's like Pac Man, but you were the bear. I did not. Oh, it's freaking great! Is this like Sharknado? Was that a game? That was a movie. No, I know the movie. I'm just, but I'm they, sure they, the movie a... came with a game that they had on their website. Oh. I don't know. Kelly had to like yell at me to get me off of it because I was playing well. <laughs> Remember? Maybe instead of Sneaky Sasquatch, you can play Sneaky Cocaine Shark. <laughs> yeah. Did you, did you <laughs> see the, doesn't quite have the same ring to it, but, you know. Louis, did you see the movie? Of Cocaine Bear? Yeah. No, I chose not to waste my money on that in the theater like other people I know. Yeah. I even dragged my wife to that. She probably loves your family. I had to know. <laughs> I had to know. They, it really let me down. Hold on. There's some great movies that were in theaters that a lot of people would wait for streaming. Yet, you, on the one movie that you probably could have or should have waited for streaming, rushed out to the theater to see. 
Um, I was, I w- I was, did they, I was did so they hopeful. send you a commemorative, like, gift bag and thank you? I was so hopeful, um, and they blew it. I mean, they just, you know, because, you know, those campy horror movies what did can you, be really funny. What did you think when you saw that, tr- okay, when you saw that preview, what did you think I thought, oh, this is going to be, I thought it was going to be hilarious. No. Oh. Okay. I mean... Kelly, did you ever have any desire whatsoever to watch Cocaine Bear streaming or otherwise? Never. Okay. Well, I mean, come on. It was Ray Liotta's final movie. Oh, that's a surefire thing to get people at theaters, obviously. Well, I mean, I'm a Ray Liotta fan. Okay. You're not? He's done some quality work. Yes. <laughs> that was not it. That was not part of it. I was really let down. Um, anyway, you know, it was based on a true story. Loose, very, very, very loosely based on the truth. <laughs> the drug dealer guy was a real guy, oh. but outside of that, <laughs> the guy that lost all the cocaine in the in oh. the forest. Oh, it's nice that they put a biopic out there for people to see. Well, looks like now they're going to have to make cocaine shark. Mm. This will be great next year for Shark Week. Uh, sharks off the Brazilian coast are testing positive for cocaine. This is no joke. Biologists tested 13 Brazilian shark-nosed sharks in the waters near Rio de Janeiro and found concentrations 100 times higher than previously found. Uh, It's not exactly clear how the sharks are coming in contact with cocaine. Well, it is South America, guys. Um, But theories include that it could be from labs where it's manufactured. Mm, It's from smugglers dumping shipments. Well, it also says, or the, well, that's that was the first thing that popped into my head, but it also says, or the excrement of cocaine users, which gets flushed into the water, I guess. I think it's more likely that you're dumping a shipment because yeah. you don't want to get nailed by the, the Coast Guard. Right. Well, I mean, this is off the Brazilian coast. Do they? Sure, they patrol. Do they? Yeah. I feel like the, uh, There's the cartel just pays those guys to not look. Maybe, but there's probably an honest two or three. This is, this is right near Rio, where during the Olympics there were body parts washing up on the beach. Someone you know. said there's already a cocaine shark movie that came out last year. Oh, is that right? Mm. I'm not going to rush out. To see Stephanie it. said, for what it was, Cocaine Bear wasn't horrible. No, they just they could have done so much more. They could have been so much funnier. They just missed out on so many funny lines, and you know. Steve but- said he would rather watch Ray Liotta's Shantix ad on loop for ninety minutes over Cocaine Shark or Cocaine Bear. <laughs> yeah, Cocaine Shark. What's next? Bear NATO? Maybe. <laughs> Don't give anybody Bear-nado. any ideas. Anyway, these findings were published this week in Science of the Total Environment. I'm like, Cocaine Sharks. This is they're really testing positive for cocaine. It doesn't surprise me, though. You don't know what's dumped in water, so it could True. be... But again, I would say maybe the Han Solo thing where everybody gets boarded once in a while. They had to drop their shipment. Right. Pissed yes. off the job of the yes. Han Solo. <laughs> <laughs> Pantera on the Morning Blitz, 738. Dick Kelly Lewis, congrats to Ken Stinnett from Marion. Picking up those Louder Than Life tickets. He was fired up. He was. That was the first time he ever won anything, he said. Very nice. Yeah. Perfect first win, That's isn't it? Good it's start, a good start, man. Win. Everything's like, I feel like, you know, everything else afterwards might be kind of a letdown after you win oh, no. weekend passes to Louder Than Life. Right? Hey, man. congratulations. You got a gift card. Oh, yay. <laughs> ah, no. Nice job, Ken. Thank you for listening. Another to chance us. tomorrow. So, you guys accidentally ever, accidentally or intentionally, Physically hurt someone? Well, intentionally. Well, uh, accidentally. Yeah. We'll stay no, we're accidentally. talking about uh, accidents. Yeah. yeah. Accidentally. <laughs> Kelly, how did you Yes, accidentally- 100%. I accidentally uh, sent my cousin to the hospital to get stitches in his face. Uh, we were playing kick the can with, I don't know if you remember, way back in the day when you would have those, like, it's a dispute which kind of can it was that we use. I think it was a metal... Uh, Maxwell House can, an mm-hmm. old coffee can. Right. He thinks it was a metal high C can. <laughs> but either way, we were playing kick the can, a big group of us cousins. And at some point, um, you know how you used to like throw things at people and say, yeah. think fast? Yeah. I whipped this can at my cousin and said, think fast. It hit him right between the eyes, gashed open a gap. It was like, you could, he still has a scar to this day. I mean, we've lived an entire lifetime since then, and to this day, you can still see the scar that's so left there. So he didn't think fast enough. 
He did not. And it was also uh, bordering on dark outside, too. So mm. I don't even think he saw it coming. Side note, do they still... I, my grandmother used to have the either the Folgers or the Maxwell Hall's coffee cans. Do they still make those? Or do you they're, buy everything in no, bags? They're plastic. Now? They're plastic. They're yeah. plastic. Okay, yeah. I remember that. The my containers are yeah. The coffee containers are plastic. But, but I always tell people to this day, he is uh, he owns Sunbury Car Company in Sunbury, and you can ask Richard Sabo there. He's the owner. Say, let me see that scar. Let me see that scar from playing kick the can oh with your gosh. cousin Kelly Quinn. He's gonna be like, They'll why is everybody you? asking me to see my scar all of a sudden? Because <laughs> it's going to happen. You, you know, it's going to happen. Have you guys ever accidentally hurt someone? Um, yeah. <laughs> Sean said that when he was 15, he accidentally cut a guy's finger off with a machete Ooh, at a whoa. haunted house. What? So he should have seen the look on people's faces when he came running out of the haunted house, missing a finger. <laughs> Jeez. That'll do it. That's for sure. Uh, Thick, have you ever accidentally hurt someone? I have. Um, when I was a kid, my grandfather bought me my first BB gun. And uh, we were down by Big Darby Creek, and I was shooting it, and I was shooting cans. You know, he was teaching me how to shoot it and stuff. Ding. Well, there was a can all flattened on the ground that I decided I was going to shoot it. So I shot that can, and the BB, BB ricocheted up and nailed him in the shoulder, which could have been a lot worse, but it meant an eye or something. But, man, that stung him good. And he was about to smash the BB gun, but he, 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 caught, he caught himself and got control and didn't. And, uh, you know, taught me a lesson. It I'll did. Say, yeah. uh, I would like to mention that my wife accidentally hurt me. And this was years ago. In the middle of the night. She punched me in the mouth. Now, she claims she was asleep. Do we know she accidentally hurt you? Or was she just like a lot of things built up? Well, that's what I said. She claims she was asleep. But, I mean, I woke up going, oh, what? what? You know, she I broke a tooth. <gasps> yes. She broke a tooth? Broke a tooth. Oh, you, I what? mean, I don't know what happened. Did you ask her if it was accidental why she was in a ground and pound MA, <laughs> MMA mode? <laughs> Why are you wearing brass knuckles? Right. What's the elbow for? If you missed where the fist, were you going to come in with that? <laughs> oh my gosh, that is a rough I say broke, night. I, so I had a tooth with a crown, and she broke the crown off. Good golly. Amanda's surprised that Kelly didn't hit someone with her car. Oh, I did hit someone with my car. She That's did. a whole other story. Yeah. Yes, but... Um, a human, like a body, not a car. She hit a body. Yeah. A pedestrian. They shouldn't have been yep. there. They shouldn't have been there. <laughs> Why don't you people quit bringing up my past and let me decide what story I want to tell? In her defense, I've hurt could, many people, she, obviously. She <laughs> thought, sure, it was the same person that threw the milkshake. Exactly. That was a right. rundown. <laughs> hey, you know, you mentioned that finger. That was funny you brought that up because this, in Tacoma, Washington, um, they somebody found a finger on July 5th. They just found a finger. Hmm. Not a bot, not a person with the finger. Well, that's probably good. That means the rest of the body is probably still functional. Local hospitals had no record of it, and the uh, owner of the finger saw the story on the local news and came forward to claim his finger. Uh, and apparently, his friend caused it to happen with fireworks the day before. So he accidentally blew his his friend blew his finger off. That's mine. Do you have any proof? Yeah. No charges <laughs> will be filed at this time, but. Yeah, so, I mean, you can definitely accidentally hurt people bad. Uh, what about you? So, the kids came to live in Ohio in 2018, and this was the first 4th of July that they were down here. So, they were still younger. Uh, the girl, who I absolutely adore, we were still in that kind of, like, awkward stage. We weren't sure what we were. Uh, so... We were walking down the street on 4th of July, and everybody was kind of in a group of people, and she was to my right behind me. I turned around the talk, and I mean, it was a spinning back fist right to her mouth. I mean, I cut her. I busted her mouth open and everything. Oh. I was like, I didn't mean... I mean, it was a straight up boom. <laughs> like, straight no. up. So, to this day, I tell her, I'm like, you are the... To this day, you are the only girl that I have ever punched in the mouth. Like... But yeah, I felt I felt horrible too. Like I really, truly, because it was completely just. She was walking, and then you know how you get animated and you turn around. Mm -hmm. I got animated and I turned around, and I mean, it just she took a back fist to the face. I felt so oh my bad. Gosh. So I guess Thick Rick knows how she felt because he took a fist to the face yes. as well from his own wife. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kelly D Nice said, uh, "No worries, you're not the only one. I've also hit a pedestrian once, which was completely not my fault." D Nice. <laughs> Dominic uh, said, "Dude, claim that finger like a lottery ticket." 
It's mine. I'm the winner. Uh, this is Sticks calling you an ass. Well, Your son already always cracked does. that tooth with the front door. <laughs> no, he did not crack the tooth. <laughs> Listen to her trying to weasel out of it. So, have you ever hurt someone? That's what we want to know. Accidentally. Not intentionally. We're not looking for anybody to run somebody down with their F-150. Yeah, to be clear, for everyone wondering about me hitting a pedestrian, she wasn't hurt. She was just super mad and took me to court. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why. Well, well she I took mean, you to court? Oh, she took me to oh, court. I didn't hear that. Absolutely took me to court. But I didn't leave no contest. if she wasn't injured, why was she... What, did because she... she was ticked. I mean, she did not have an injury on her. She was wearing shorts. And she's like... But but, and I really literally was just like kind of rolling forward and mm-hmm. clipped her. Yeah. Now, granted, I would have been furious as well. Okay. But she wasn't hurt. She didn't fall over. Well, what so, was she so, suing okay, you for? Okay, okay hold for on. Hitting, for hitting and leaving the scene. Oh, you did a hit and run? Yeah, but I mean, I just oh. rolled down the window and asked, are you okay? Wait a minute. And I she heard that part. And then she, she said, yes, I feel. Oh, we are going much off. further down the hold road. Hold on. But I didn't know the what point was. is, I didn't hurt her. Isn't okay, that the hold, point? Hold on. So wait a minute. So you're upset that this woman is upset because you struck her with your vehicle. No, I get that. <laughs> I'm saying when we're talking away. about accidentally hurting people, that was not a hurt. I did not hurt anyone in that case. So it doesn't fit in this segment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So <laughs> she was super infuriated with me for I cannot running why. into her, but she wasn't hurt. I in turn got hit by a car. So it's all equal here in life. All right. We've all gotten our karma. You should not. You should not be upset with me. What did I do wrong, jerk ass? <laughs> I wasn't upset with her at all. I understood the fury, but she, I was like, well, what are you going to do? You're not hurt. I mean, what do I do? So I just pulled away. <laughs> I mean, was that wrong? What was I supposed to do? She's well, not yeah. hurt. She just was really super in- did you mad. Ask, did you ask her if you could pull away? Well, why is it her decision? <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you exchange information? No, I guess that was I guess that was the issue. So she had to get your license plate and track you down. Yeah, because I, I should have said, listen, do you need to go get checked out? Even though you're walking perfectly fine and there's no <laughs> mark on your body, do you need to get checked out by an ambulance? You freaking overreacting. Uh, and then she looked at Kelly and said, F- you. How about that? How about that, goo face? Big time. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> what did I do wrong, jerk ass? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Huh. Okay. I don't deny hitting someone. I just, I deny hurting someone. All right. Anyway. How did you accidentally hurt someone? You can text us at 99700 or call in 1-800-821-9970. Fly Leaf on the Morning Blitz 750 with Vic, Kelly, and Lewis. We're talking about, have you ever accidentally hurt someone? Uh, Kelly was in... A legitimate hit and run. We'll no, get- that's not my story. My story is with I that I threw a metal can at my cousin <laughs> and gave him stitches in his face. I did not hurt the girl that I hit that's right. with my vehicle. Yeah, so that doesn't qualify. Right. So we'll get back to we'll get back to her mowing down a pedestrian <laughs> in just a few, but Bill has a story for us. You there, Bill? Yeah, I'm here. All right, man. What happened? What'd you do? How'd you accidentally hurt someone? Well, it was uh probably 25 years ago or so, I was, took a girl I was dating up to Magic Mountain. They was playing putt-putt golf. And I was, you know, in between shots, I was swinging my golf club around. <laughs> no, no. Not paying attention. I smacked her in the head with the golf club. Ooh. I didn't realize she was right behind me. Damn. Uh, she didn't have to be hospitalized or anything, but she Oof. was in some pain. Was there a second date? Yeah, yeah, yep. Wow. That's very good. Yeah, That's really. Impressive. That usually is a deal breaker. <laughs> it's not often right? you can tee off on someone with a golf club and still get a second date out of the deal. <laughs> very nice. Right. <laughs> she didn't have, so she didn't need stitches or anything? No, no, it just yeah, it just rocked her world for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no book can walk around and say, I rocked that girl's world. <laughs> uh-huh. Absolutely. Hey, thanks for the call, Bill. Appreciate it. Uh, we are uh, getting a ton of people. Oh, my gosh. They are flying in. Uh, somebody texted in and said he, I'm assuming it's a he, broke a girl's tailbone in middle school. They Ooh. used to, like, knee people in the butt, and they thought it was so funny. 
and this person need this girl in the butt and it broke her tailbone. My gosh. How far did you cock back? I know, no man. No kidding. Uh, someone said they accidentally hit a guy with an order picker and <laughs> smashed him into the guardrail. Ouch. Uh, this one said when my brother was in seventh grade, he yeah. He yanked a stool out from under a kid as he was about to sit down on it. The kid kid went through a floor to ceiling window, got seventy five stitches in all down his arm. Ouch. F, he said. <laughs> uh, Liz said she accidentally broke her sister's ankle jumping on the trampoline. Trampoline injuries. They Ooh. might that might be right up there with yard darts as far Absolutely. as backdoor backyard injuries. Yeah. Um. So I'm trying to find the text, and I can. I'll keep looking for it as I tell this person's story. Um, they were talking about um, shingles, tiles, or the, yeah, like roof. the sheets. Yeah, roofing yeah, tiles. Roofing yeah. tiles. Roofing yeah. tiles. They used to whip them at each other. Oh, they yeah. were doing roofing, and it sliced some guy's stomach yeah. wide open. Oh yeah. Dang. Oh. Oh. Emily said her husband was holding out the front door closed for my sister to get out. She didn't know he was there. Uh, he hid to the side and used his leg, and then right as she was like, "What?" Um, hang on, sir. The edge of the storm door slammed right into his face, busted his lip open. Oh. It was hilarious at the time, bad timing, but uh, yeah, he got took what, took a screen door to the face. <laughs> Man, I didn't know roofing shingle could do that much damage. Oh, though. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, I was picking up my eight-year-old daughter once under a doorway, lifted her up playfully and fast, and slammed her head into the door frame. Oops. Ouch. <laughs> Marianne says, my dad was chopping wood in the woods. Darn it. It just flipped away. Anyway, he like flew, uh, he was like cranked back the axe, just chopped the wood, and the axe head flew off and um, sliced the top of her uncle's head wide open. The dad sliced the top of the uncle's head wide open Ouch. with an axe head. Ouch. That must have killed. Right? Oh. Oh, man. All right. Keith, the dump, dump truck guy, says one year at the Ohio State Fair, we locked my buddy out of the car. So he jumped on the hood and we put the car in gear and rolled forward, which caught his leg and pulled him under the car, breaking his leg. Ouch. Out. Damn. Josh said, uh, the tailgate of my truck was frozen shut. My friend held the latch open, and I kicked the tailgate, broke his finger. Ooh. Wish I could say beer was involved, but it wasn't. Uh. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez, some people, injuries. Uh, Larry was the one with the roofing tiles, so that's wild. Slice somebody wide open mm. that way. McKenna, <laughs> McKenna said she accidentally punched a co-worker in the face when he came up behind and scared her. He got a bloody nose. I thought I broke it for a few minutes. I was known for as Muhammad Ali for a while after that. <laughs> he got a good nickname out of the deal. <laughs> Dave said, scientists claim that our bodies have a protective system so that we don't feel pain when run over by a speeding motorist. The pain doesn't kick in until you see the taillights disappear. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, three things you need to know before you go. Today is opening day of the Ohio State Fair. It runs through August 4th. Admission is $12 for adults, 10 for kids and seniors, uh, those five and under free. A ride wristband is $36. Parking is free. Uh, the evening concert today is Kids Bop. Tomorrow it's Alabama. And on Friday, Stone Temple Pilots. Kids Bop. Yeah, Kids Bop. So 36 uh, bucks. 36 bucks for your ride wrist, uh, and, wristband. And that's on top of the entry? Yeah. So $48 to go to the Ohio State Fair and ride the rides. I guess so. Man. Just seems high to me. I don't know. I can't remember ever getting a ride wristband or riding the rides at the fair, except the Sky the sky Ride. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, when, when I was a kid, you just paid... You, you bought per the ride. tickets. You bought tickets, and each yeah, ride cost so many that's tickets. That's right. That's right. Like five tickets. Yeah, for the which, bigger yeah, rides. Yeah, were more, yeah. yeah. You know, that's how. Kitty rides were like one ticket. Yeah. But I mean, that just seems seems that's high hefty. for fair t- fair rides. I'm assuming the thirty six dollars is on top of admission. Yeah. I, th- I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, that that is hefty. You're right. Uh, the rescue. This is so wild. Have you guys heard about this Southern Ohio man? This man from Ironton named Scott Hearn. He left to, uh, I guess, go to Kentucky from Ironton to the Daniel Boone National Forest to look for waterfalls. He left July 6th. He didn't tell anybody who was going. Nobody. By July 8th, two days later, his family is like, what the heck? They reported him missing because they hadn't heard from him in two solid days. Um, 
And he was just found on Saturday. He went for, I think, 10 days missing to almost two weeks missing um, and nine to 10 of those days without food and water. Um, he was in Kentucky's Red River Gorge for two weeks. It's an absolute miracle. Even the rescuers are saying it's a miracle that they found him in what they call um, the roughest terrain they had ever had to navigate. It was really rough terrain. He uh, apparently had six bottles of water with him in a bag of trail mix, and that was all gone uh, by two days later. All gone. Yeah. Now, I've never heard of anybody being able to survive without water that long. This is, we're talking another, I guess, nine days. Jeez. With no food, no water. He had somehow fallen and gotten injured. So he was just kind of laying there. And rescuers, on the very last day they were going to search for this guy, they were giving up. That was it. Final day of the search and rescue. They were making their way through this wildly rough terrain and heard someone faintly calling for help. And they reached him. This guy was so unbelievably thankful. He was absolutely certain he was going to die there. I imagine. The first thing he did was ask for a hug. So can somebody... That's how, like dire this man's situation was now he is was extremely dehydrated he was scratched up but otherwise is recovering just fine wow pretty crazy all right let me tell you this weird story about this reality show called race to survive new zealand these people have to survive 40 days in the craziest parts of New Zealand. That hiker should Punishing get in terrain, it. huh? That hiker should yeah, get in it. Right, well, he <laughs> behaved a little better than this American contestant on Uh-oh. that show. But let me tell you, there are like nine teams of two contestants each. You each you have a team member. And there are nine of these teams. You have to race across 150 miles of New Zealand's most punishing terrain in 40 days. All right? So at some point, by episode eight of this show, this American contestant named Corey Jones who claims he was in mini starvation mode because you do have to find your own way and your own food. He killed and ate a protected flightless bird called a weka. It's about the size of a chicken. Um, so that broke every law in terms of, you know, protected animals in New Zealand. Um, and he and his teammate were disqualified because of it. Now, typically you can spend up to two years for killing a protected bird wow. um, in in, wow. in jail. But they're just giving him, uh, because of the situation, I guess, the conservation department in uh, New Zealand says it's going to let him off with a warning. But that calls into question, like, to me, these reality shows. Yeah. You know, just for fun, you're going to try to survive 40 days on TV for, a, uh, I don't know what, you know, for a chance at a half million dollars. And a protected bird had to die and be eaten now it, you know it's weird to you, me you think about the again we'll go back to the hiker the story before yeah if you're out like that and and you see this bird you're going to try right you're dying you're dying you're, you're not on tv right you're not on tv right. trying to not die man but, and i i get it i mean you look at it like you said it's about the size of a chicken it looks like it's packed full of meat and, and the, the issue with me and i had this problem with survivor too when they give these people chickens it's like you do not have to kill and eat an animal you're on a tv show how dare you put an animal through that it really bothers me they're trying to make it realistic though it's but it's not realistic the thing is is we all know there are there's a giant camera crew who's probably got a nice buffet and you're not going to starve to death but you're not allowed to let them eat that though i know but it's a game dude you're going to torture an animal in a game? I agree with you. I'm just saying where their mentality we is. We don't need to play that kind of game. I think that is really messed up. All it's right. messed up. I'm getting hungry. I'm going to hit the banging machine and then get back <laughs> for, to this hike. For a live chicken? <laughs> All right. Those are your three things. Ozzy uh, Osbourne on the Morning Blitz. It's Thick Kelly and Lewis 812. Hot, humid, sunny today. Nice first day of the uh, Ohio State Fair. If you're going, if you're down with that. Uh, if you're driving there, though, <laughs> perhaps... People are thinking that maybe the faster you should go, the harder it should be to push your gas pedal. So you'd have to work overtime to hit someone now. <laughs> Put a little effort into it. 
kidding. Yeah, this didn't happen on the freeway. <laughs> my issue. I know you're really trying to get under my skin no, right now. I'm, I'm not, not letting you. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, maybe they should make the, the gas pedal harder to push if there's a pedestrian on the road. Yeah. Okay, so let me ask you. This is, you can go up to the speed limit pushing the gas pedal as normally, but as soon as it's past the speed limit, it becomes harder, harder to, to push, push down. Yes. To yeah. get this, is a, this is a thing they're really looking at? That would really help me. Uh, that's I all I'm saying. So. I'm not saying I would love it, but I'm saying it would help. Oh, I'd be standing on the thing. Yeah. Straight up wood. This uh, is a this is but this is they're really like uh-huh. trying to put this in cars. Uh-huh. It's like a like a like a yeah. different kind of governor kind of thing. I don't know what it is last couple of days. Like every time I've been on the road, minivans. Honda Odyssey, which if you, no offense, if you drive a Honda Odyssey, you're probably categorically the worst driver on any road that you're on. But minivans, this morning, I'm going a comfortable 83 on the highway, minivan flying by me. I want a bullhorn so I can go, dude, you're in a minivan. (laughs) Doesn't make you cooler. All right, uh, we're up against a break. Can we come back to this? Yes, we can. There's more to, we got to discuss some more of this. This is, this is too good. It's the Morning Blitz with Dick Kelly and Lewis, say 26, 6 a.m. Before that, Gerald said, because I said something about Honda Odysseys, F off, Lewis. I got a first-gen Odyssey manual swap, put a tune on, let's race. Did you fly by Lewis this morning at 90 miles an hour? Was that you? Was that you in the minivan? <laughs> uh, Jonathan said, can you give us a shout-out, Asheville Food Truck Festival, July 26th through the 27th. 20-plus food trucks, beer tents, bands, 30 craft vendors, awesome. and more. That sounds like stilt a good walkers. Time. I want to see. Walkers. I love a stilt yeah. walker, you guys. I love a stilt walker. I like Justin's idea. Christmas in July, for every $1,000 donated, Rick has to break dance. If donates, donations hit 10000 he has to say what his dance name was. That's a hell of an idea. Would you be willing to? That's a hell of an idea. For the kids, man. Do it for the kids. You willing to? Well, be willing to we always that. break those numbers. We got to up that. But we don't. Yeah, for, something just that, a, for something this was that just special, challenge. Okay, that something to a, discuss. I love the idea. Let's I'm discuss the parameters. Right. Two of the three of us are with you, Justin. Just <laughs> so you know you are. that. Of just so you, you know are. that. Like right. Rick, for years, has refused to tell us his breakdance name in high school. For wow. years, we've never been able to draw it out of him or find anybody else who knows. So <laughs> this is a great that's, idea, and that's what I love about it. It just drives you crazy. Now, tell me about this. They're really going to do this with gas pedals in cars. Yes, yeah, so this is the deal. They want to try to make the roads safer and prevent speeding, which, again, you've raised the speed limit to a 70, which, if we're being honest, is a little light on the highway. But And it could be 70 in other places where it still isn't. In Texas, it's like 80, which is awesome. But anyway, <laughs> um, should gas pedals be harder to push as the faster you go? And most people... Over half of the majority would be okay with it. Cars in Europe are going to be required to come with tech that alerts you when you're speeding. You're able to turn the feature off, though. I had a rental car once when my car got totaled. I was in a Volkswagen rental car. Every time I hit 70 and went over 70, it would beep. It was the most annoying. I didn't know how you could turn it off until right now. What I need a beep for is if I'm approaching someone who's going to hassle me for driving over 70. You mean you, me you a, need a, you need a get, yeah, police monitor? Is that what you're talking about? A, a speed a fuzz buster? detector? Yeah. A fuzz buster. Thank you. I, 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 I haven't heard a, about it for so long. I forgot what it was I feel called. like those things just never kept up with technology. So <laughs> they were, some they people want this added to new cars here, too. An insurance group did a poll on it. Surprisingly, it was popular. 60% of Americans think it would be okay to have a feature like that at the beginning of every trip to make the roads safer. And, and you could save on insurance, maybe? It jumps to 70% if your car insurance would cost yes. less. Then more people are I involved like that. in that. I had the State Farm thing where it monitors how you drive. I threw that thing out the window because it, I would get pan, pinged for like, oh, that was a rough start. I'm in a Jeep, a manual transmission <laughs> Every start Jeep. Is a rough start. <laughs> what the smooth and that car do not go together. Right. So I punted that thing out the window. And we got a text that says I've gone 180 in my Corvette. Yeah, see, exactly. 180. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, there's another idea that if you speed up, your gas pedal gets harder and harder to push. 51% right. of people say that's okay, too. The least popular option was adding a limiter to prevent your engine from letting you speed. I don't Amazon like, yeah, van. What am I, in a moped here? What no, is this? Amazon vans have that. Yeah. And it drives so me crazy. So do school buses. Right. Why in the hell are you in the left lane for any reason if you know <laughs> you cannot go over 70? Back that big bitch into the right lane and stay there. <laughs> 
<laughs> you have a limiter on your car. You cannot. You do not deserve by law to be in the fit in the far left lane. <laughs> you cannot go over seventy. Come on. I guess my issue is, what if there's some kind of emergency and you really do need to go faster? Like you're heading toward the hospital at right. breakneck speed. I know you're not supposed to speed anyway, but obviously, if you're you have a situation in your car, I don't know. I want the <laughs> right. option to speed if I just if I must. Right. Uh, Doug said, to this day, Lewis's insurance still thinks he's crashed in a ditch. <laughs> That's very possible. Um, yeah, I don't like the idea of, I don't like the idea of a limiter. I really don't. No, don't do that to me. I don't want a limiter, but you Sometimes can you like, have to. make it difficult. Make it more difficult for me to speed. I'm okay with that. I like the heavy pedal. I'd be okay with the heavy pedal. Like how heavy we talking? Like how much, like... Do I need to work out in order to be able to push the pedal any further? Uh, I need to have a good workout, a good thigh no, no, workout no regimen. No heavy pedal, no limiter. No, leave me alone. Why don't you speed up? Because I'm 115 pounds and I can't push this thing. <laughs> Sound Garden on the Morning Blitz. It's Thick Kelly and Lewis, 840. Time for a little couples therapy brought to you by Tri-State Men's Health. Uh, three locations, or excuse me, six locations total, two here in Columbus, uh, one in Hilliard, the other in the Medical Mile in Westerville. And I started taking in testosterone injections, uh, what, I've probably been doing this almost 16 weeks. I love it. I have felt better than I have in years, and there's so many things that where guys are concerned. When you're feeling tired and you're feeling sluggish and you just don't feel like you can perform quite the way you used to, it causes a lot of problems in the household, in the marriage, in the relationship. And, you know, you don't have to. Get some help. Give them a call. Trust me. They can help you. I had a bunch of people, like, behind the scenes reach out and go, hey, does this stuff really work? Yeah. I'm telling you, it's not a pill. It's an herbal. It's easy to do. And it is a game changer. Uh, Stop in and see them or give them a call. They might be able to help you out and get you uh, feeling the way you want to feel again. 800-900-9654 or tristatementshealth.com. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I... True, full disclosure, hearing some of the stories from people, like from guys who have not gotten like their ED treated or they've tried like the pills you buy in the gas station or online or whatever and it doesn't work. I feel bad, man. Like that's something that... Don't let that linger too long <laughs> no don't. fix that right away anyway uh couples therapy thick you want to take us there sure this one's uh this one's good i like this one it says uh i don't know if i have any right to be upset with my wife been married 12 years don't have any kids both work not exactly killing it money wise we aren't poor but we don't spend a ton on extras either we've been talking about saving for a trip to ireland but haven't made any solid plans here's the issue My wife's father just passed away in May. It's been tough on her. In the will, her father left her and her brother $5,000 each. Not a huge amount of money, but in my mind, I'm thinking that would go a long way toward our vacation to Ireland. My mistake. I shouldn't have been making plans with her money. Needless to say, I was surprised and disappointed when she told me her friends invited her to join them on a trip to St. Bart's in the Caribbean, which is expensive, and she wants to use the money from her dad. Am I crazy for feeling upset about this? Thanks, Darren in Columbus. Ooh, Ooh yeah. I'm like, I'm upset? Maybe even concerned about your marriage. Go on. I just think that's really wrong on her part. I mean, he's trying to plan this with his wife, and all of a sudden she wants to take that money and go with her friends to the Caribbean. I think your marriage is in trouble, dude. Yeah. You really gonna really do. She's going to wander into Dexter St. Jock well, down there in the I Caribbean. I don't know about that, <laughs> but when, you know, you oh, guys have been talking about why trying... Why are you down here in the Caribbean all by yourself? Swinging his D. <laughs> <laughs> we go to make <laughs> it all better. Then he hangs it over his shoulder. Have another shoulder. rum. <laughs> I want to make love to you all night. Exactly. <laughs> but I just think, you know, that's... that's it just a- seems really disrespectful and and inconsiderate towards your spouse. Like, yeah, I don't want to use this money to go on vacation with you. I want to use this money to go on vacation with my girls down at the beach. I, I don't know that she's thinking about hooking up with somebody, but just the fact that she would rather use it to go on vacation with her friends when they haven't been able to afford a vacation together? No, BS, man. I mean, that's a deal breaker. 
Oh, you'd get divorced over this? I'd, I mean, we'd have to have a long talk. Okay. Like, why? Why are you, Really? So I got to just sit home. You're going to take our money that we were trying to go on vacation with, and you're going to go with your friends? Would you like... But what the hell is that? Now, if you guys did vacations all the time and you had plenty of money, that's a different story. Uh, I mean, am I crazy? I, I, would no. you like me to jump in before? Please. You, okay. Go right ahead. Yeah. So I, it has been my experience that... There's our money and their money. And, not- <laughs> <laughs> and it is a thing where women tend oh. to keep score. <laughs> and I don't think that guys necessarily do. So when she, in her mind, I'm guessing that she got that money from her dad. So she's that's her money. She's going to do with it what she wants to do. And it doesn't count as your money. She's not going to take that trip with you. She's going to do whatever. And if she's always wanted to go to St. Bart's with her friends, she sees that as her money. It does not matter how much you may have spent to take care of her. It's her money. It's not our money. And she's going to do... She'll keep score where you might not necessarily. Yeah, the whole your money, our money thing, that's wrong too. Money is the root of all. In a marriage. In a marriage. But they say in a re- any kind of relationship, well, they say money is the root of all evil. It absolutely is. Love it, of money is the saying. The love of money is the root of all evil. Not abs- the money itself. Right. Yes. The love of money. Yeah. And that's, I believe that's a thousand percent true. All right. Well, let me uh, let me just say this because I am in full agreement with you, Thick, that it shows something weak about this marriage. Uh, or or no, I don't want to say weak, but it shows that there is an issue. Now, to just have proper perspective... These guys talked about a trip to Ireland, but haven't started saving, haven't started making solid plans. So this wasn't actively being saved for yet. Number two, this woman, they don't say how old they are, but they've been married for 12 years. So they're not, well, it doesn't, they're probably not older people. Um, losing a parent is really difficult. So she may be in a really deep state of grief, which you say it's been hard on her. So she's got grief. She's got an extra five grand and she's got a group of girlfriends who are already planning a trip and want her to go along. I can see the appeal of that. What I don't understand here is a wife with $5,000 that she was just gifted, not thinking of her husband first. Like I would never, ever, ever, ever fathom not using that money for a trip for my husband and I. I, I would not. It doesn't even appeal to me to go with a group of girls to St. Bart's when I could take that trip which, or a trip to Ireland, Ireland with my husband. Which plays into what I was saying. If she's keeping score, you probably don't mean as much to her as you might think you do. Or well, What's the score part of it that you're thinking? Like she's keeping score how? Because she's the money. The money. She sees that as right. hers, not not theirs. I see. So she's like saying, This is mine. Right. I was gifted. So yes. I get the impression based on Darren's email that if this were reversed and he got five thousand from his dad, he would be like, Honey, I got the money for us to go to Ireland yeah. now and they would go together. That's what it sounds like. In her mind, she got five thousand to go hang out with her friends because you might she means she you don't mean as much to her as you think you do at the end of the day. Because she again She's got a tally sheet that she compiles in her head, and your your odds and ends don't add up to her odds and ends. If that makes any kind of sense, yeah, I, yeah, you I, know what I mean. I, I, I mean, I, I guess I know what you mean. I, I would say that there is an uh, the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. The relationship doesn't seem equal. I guess that's what. Yes. Yeah. yeah. In terms again, of the the love or the care, I, it, I, you, it's the whole like everything is hers, not ours. Yeah, that's a, an odd, selfish move. Now, don't forget, she is in the midst of some deep grief here, that's like true too. deep grief. So, Darren, you have to talk to her about this. Do not swallow this anger because literally, we all would probably feel the same way. Our feelings would be hurt, or we would be upset about it. Yes, because that would be really weird to be left out as the spouse. Um, you have to say something, but I would approach it saying, listen, I know you're in a huge amount of grief and I'm really, you know, that's nice that, that your dad left you $5,000. And if this is what you want to do, it's your money. And he wants you to do something fun with it. 
Um, but I just have to say, just so that we can have a clear relationship here, is that my, I was really hurt. By, I'm really hurt by this. Are we off? Do you think there's more going on in Dar- Darren's marriage that Darren realizes? Uh, let us know. Text us, 99700. You can always call us if you want to. We'll come back and see what Blitz Nation thinks about this. Because yeah, I, I think we all can agree that this ain't the perfect couple's relationship that's going on here one way or the other, right? We, we can all yeah. come to that agreement. What do you think, Blitz Nation? Disturbed, stupefy, the morning blitz, 854 Thick, Kelly and Lewis, talking about Darren's email and couples therapy today, brought to you by Tri-State Men's Health. Um, Darren wants to go on a trip to Ireland with his wife. Her dad died. She got five grand. Instead of going to Ireland with her man, she wants to go to St. Bart's in the Caribbean with some of her friends. Darren feels a little miffed. I would, too. Adam said the marriage is over. It sounds like a selfish bitch to me. I would tell her to take the five grand and stick it up or you know what. <laughs> she can't, he says you can't even, you can't ever put your husband or spouse in second place in your life. It doesn't matter what the situation is. If that's how she's going to be, she doesn't need to be married. Dexter um, St. I don't know. Is. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know here. <laughs> I don't think this is a marriage ender yet. Mudcat said maybe the friend she grew up with knew her dad, and it could be a way of therapy. Oh, please. And then someone said maybe it's not about the money. Maybe her girlfriends are going to be a lot more supportive. And you're right, Kelly. It's not a marriage ender until she gets on that plane. I feel like, you know, it is a chance for a conversation, seeing as you're at a point where you would spend money to go on a trip with her, and she's at a point where she would spend found money to go on a trip with her girlfriends. Um, it, maybe it's exposing some issue with communication or support or something during this time of grieving for her. Um, but I do think it's worth a, a big conversation just to say, I'm not expecting you or demanding that you spend this money on me. I was just surprised that this was your choice and it hurt my feelings. So can we talk about this? Mary said, we think it's unfair that we assume there's a problem in the marriage just because she wants to go with her friends. It might help forget, help her forget about her dad for a while. Hmm. Clay well, said if he was a dude, it would definitely show him where he stands with her. If anything, she should want to take her husband to be there for her while she's grieving. It's like I said, if I'm grieving over the loss of a loved one, I'm going to turn to my spouse. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Uh, Tony said I would tell her to go ahead and take her clothes with her and stay there. <laughs> uh, Dominic says turn the trip to Ireland into a dude's trip. <laughs> oh, jeez. I mean. Steve said it's a lot cheaper for Darren to go to Ireland by himself now. Well, this is true. Yeah, and somebody said uh, about taking her. St. Bart's is not cheap. St. Bart's is pretty high end. I don't think they could both go for five grand. Well, it doesn't sound like he's invited either. Well, that's the other thing. <laughs> I don't, I don't think she, have to worry about and that. that. And that's and that to me is what it all comes down to is she does not want him with her on a vacation that they've been trying to plan together for a long time. They don't have a lot of money. They don't go on vacations together. So now. She's got money. She's going to go off without no. him. No, I, I no. Yes, man. My my, I am in full agreement. Like uh-huh. absolutely. If this this would never happen in my marriage, right. never ever in a million years would either of us decide we're going to spend found money on a vacation <laughs> with other people, right? And not each other. That would not happen. It would absolutely. Yeah. Make me, cr- it would crush me. I'd feel so yeah. sad by that. Right. Sandy said, "Hi guys and Kelly." I won the lottery in 2021 on a scratch-off. I gave both my kids $30,000 each. My daughter's married happily. She shared with uh, her husband and kids. My son had a girlfriend at the time, didn't share with the girlfriend because they were not in a good place, so I agree this wife is probably not on the same happy level as the husband. Oh, by the way, my son went and bought him a badass truck. You three are awesome. Thank you. Sandy, can I be one of your kids? (laughs) 15K. I don't need 30. That's just aggressive. 15K. (laughs) I'll take less since I'm not blood. I'll show up at Christmas. Just adopt. I'll even bring. I'll even make Skyline dip for you. Bottom line, Darren, you have got to talk to your wife. You have to see what's going on here. It may be innocent, but it it sounds like there's some yeah little bit of inequality yeah, happening you, here. Have a discussion, man. That's what you need to do. Communication key to everything. Uh, if you would like to send us an email, you can send that to thickrick at theblitz dot com. Whether it's couples therapy or just anything you would like a an unbiased opinion on in your life. Right now. The three things you need to know before you go. Well, as we head toward Friday's opening ceremonies in uh, Paris for the 2024 Summer Olympics, Team USA men's soccer begins its run today. I'm sure you covered it in Sports Thick, but the team plays host nation France in the first of three group stages. Opening ceremonies, like I said, for the games is Friday. Now... 
a British equestrian who is the country's joint most decorated female Olympian. Her name is Charlotte Dujardine, has pulled out of the 2024 Paris Olympics over a video that she says she is deeply ashamed of. This video reportedly shows Dujardine whipping a horse repeatedly on the legs oh, I didn't during a that. training session. I, I know. Uh, Dujardine said that uh, the video showed, quote, an error of judgment during a coaching session four years ago. Uh, she's 39 years old, Charlotte. She is a, a, a dressage star. She's won six Olympic medals in her career. The governing body for equestrian sports, FEI, says it has suspended Dujardine for six months. Uh, how did they get this video? A whistleblower. Somebody filmed her doing this. Must have been so, like, upset over it. Like the horse it. sent the video. <laughs> But the odd thing is, why four years ago? Why why did it take four years to send this? Is it like it coincide with the last Olympics? And this person sort of held on to some anger and could really impact her for this Olympics? Probably wouldn't pay him. Uh, oh. Oh, you're going to the Olympics. I'll have this little video. Well, this person, whoever the whistleblower is who had the video, hired an attorney, and that attorney sent the video to the FEI, and they suspended her. She's wow. gone. Hired She's an gone. attorney to do it. Hired an attorney to do wow. it. Okay, then yeah. he wasn't, I'm guessing he wasn't trying to blackmail her. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, oh, well, yeah. A couple more notable Olympics news. Uh, Snoop Dogg will be one of the final bearers of the Olympic torch as it makes its way <laughs> to the Olympic Stadium in Saint-Denis. <laughs> Uh, Snoop will be part of NBC's coverage of the Olympics. And this is wild, too. Even if you're not a Celine Dion uh, fan, she's not given a performance in five years. We found out that she had been diagnosed with stiff person syndrome. She was unable to sing. This glorious singer with the voice of an angel has not been able to perform in five years. And reports are that Celine Dion will perform at the Olympics opening ceremony on Friday. And get paid two million dollars awesome i absolutely love it i'm thrilled for her what a horrible thing if the thing you love most in life you contract you contracted a disease that did not allow you to do it how horrible would that be man two million dollars bravo i am really looking forward to seeing her sing and uh yeah she deserves every penny of that it's i feel so happy for her i hope that that everything goes well on friday for her and those are your three things snoop snoop Snoop. why is there smoke coming out of both hands there's only one torch there dude (laughs) (laughs) snoop's a national treasure Uh, casey said will snoop have the torch in his mouth that's what i'm like (laughs) is is that a torch is that a giant blunt i don't know steve says if snoop doesn't use the olympic torch to light a joint he's wasting everyone's time there it is that's what we need tried to smoke one of these here torches (laughs) (laughs) high as f on that